section in my presentation on group training or team training is on how to set up stations uh, so that you can make sure that everyone is doing something in a session so that you have a good flow, uh, but also so that you're taking into account their rest periods. And I mean this for two reasons. Uh, on one hand, if you've got a very large group, you wanna make sure that you have adequate equipment so that people aren't resting too long and the session isn't taking forever to do one exercise. But also in a smaller group, you wanna make sure that people are resting enough instead of just bouncing back and forth between maybe two exercises. And I find this is usually an issue when you get into um, certain tier performance groups that just wanna work really hard. Groups, you also wanna take into account the constraints uh, of the time that you have with that group. So when you're working with a group or a team and you're in the private sector, odds are you are only going to have an hour with that team, sometimes even less if there's takedown or setup time. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're making the most out of the hour of the session, uh, which means that you might have to eliminate some rest periods from what might be perfectly adequate. Uh, you might have to pair exercises that are slightly impairing to each other, but even with the reduced capacity that you're putting into these exercises, you're still going to get more out of doing them than you would out of removing them, especially if you see the group or team for a limited amount of sessions see it too is if you're working with especially youth or developmental athletes you're providing them with a general stimulus uh, so you might as well expose them to the broadest one possible with the largest variety of movement patterns on uh, different stressors so that they're not accustomed to maybe one or two exercises they know how to move their body in a variety of different contexts so it's not just forward it's not just sideways it's everything in between and every variation you can think of Conversely, when you're running maybe a high performance group uh, or maybe an elite level athlete, you are looking to then structure the session less so around the time constraint and more around the workout. Uh, and what I mean by that is that when I'm working with a high performance group, they have a program that sets them up for a workout. The session is done when they've completed that workout start to finish not once the time limit is up. I like doing this is that you can't let uh, Parkinson's law take hold. So if you haven't heard of Parkinson's law before, it's the, idea, the adage that uh, work will expand to fill the available time. So if you go the other way around where you are just trying to get through the work, that usually doesn't happen. As fun as groups are, and I especially love working with them for this reason, they tend to be a form of organized chaos. Uh, and from time to time, the chaos gets out of hand. So here's some ideas on how to rein in the chaos. Remember when working with a group that's being a bit unruly that they are on your time, not the other way around. So if they're distracted at the point uh, and they're being disruptive where they're not achieving anything, you have to be very comfortable uh, and secure in silence and being patient to let them go on until they realize that if they keep doing that, they're not going to achieve what they want to achieve in the session. And you're not going to talk over them. Moments like this to help identify leaders. So often you'll find it's the same kids or the same people in the group speaking up to bring order to everyone. And you can use those leaders to help your cause. Even at young ages, give them responsibility. It'll only help them. Disturbances can also be an opportunity to identify unruly individuals. So these kids can also benefit from more responsibility uh, and giving them more attention you can use them as demonstrations. You can try and connect with them a little bit more, but it's a bit hit or miss. Warning, uh, be sure to always deal within your zone of competence when managing a group. And what I mean by that is never approach a group with negativity just because you've seen somebody else do it. Uh, it reeks of insecurity. Uh, now, this is something that I've made this mistake. Warning, uh, be sure to always deal within your zone of competence when managing a group. And what I mean by that is never approach a group with negativity just because you've seen somebody else do it. Uh, it reeks of insecurity. Uh, now, this is something that I've made this mistake. Warning, uh, be sure to always deal within your zone of competence when managing a group. And what I mean by that is never approach a group with negativity just because you've seen somebody else do it. Uh, it reeks of insecurity. Uh, now, this is something that I've made this mistake. I continue to make this mistake. It's, it's easy to fire back. I'm quick-witted. I can come up with a sharp chirp and try and sweep, sweep someone's legs out. Uh, you know, everyone laughs. It seems like you won the group over, but you really haven't. The, the real way to make connection and actually deepen your bond with a group, as cheesy as it sounds uh, and as simple as it sounds, is to actually care.
People do not care how much you know or what you're doing until they know how much you care. I'm sure everyone's heard that quote before. The disclaimer on the last point, of course I am still going to make fun of people when I coach them. That's half the fun. But usually it comes after years of building a relationship where it is a, it comes from a place of love. To remember is that people will process negative feedback at a much higher rate than they will positive. So you want to have, I know you think two to one's a lot, three to one's a lot. You want to be five to one, positive to negative. And I'm working on this. In that five to one ratio, how else can we show athletes that we actually care? Things like learning their name, asking about their lives outside of the training session, being able to remember that information just like you would a normal person, uh, at the, telling them how this is going to apply to this is that you want to make sure you have very strong boundaries within a group. Uh, you want to stay professional. You want to respect their time so they'll respect yours. You want to make sure that exercise is a privilege so that they could lose and that you won't present.